Russia is a country situated in Eastern Europe and Northern Asia, bordering Norway, Finland, Estonia, Latvia, Lithuania, Poland, Belarus, Ukraine and Georgia in Europe, as well as Azerbaijan, Kazakhstan, China, Mongolia and North Korea in Asia. Russia also borders Japan and the USA through the sea. With a total area of more than 17 million square kilometers, Russia is the world's biggest country, followed by Canada with 10 million square kilometers. It covers one-eighth of the world's inhabited land area. The country is so big that from Kaliningrad to Kamchatka it covers 11 different time zones. Also, you can clearly see the Earth curvature by just looking at a map of Russia. Russia has a total population of about 147 million, which makes it Europe's most populous nation and ninth most populous nation in the world. Little less than 50 million people live in the country's west, little less than 50 million in the country's south, and little less than 50 million in the country's east. The largest metropolitan areas are Moscow, with 20 million inhabitants, making it Europe's largest city and capital city of Russia. St. Petersburg, Europe's fourth largest city with 5.35 million inhabitants, and Novosibirsk in Russia's Siberia, holding 1.6 million people. Russia truly is a diverse country. There are many different ethnic groups living in Russia. Besides the Russians, 3.9% of Russia's population are Tartars, 1.4% Ukrainians, 1.1% Bashkir, 1% Kuvaksh, 1% Chechen, and 10.7% are others. That's why there are 35 different languages considered official languages along with Russian. And there are over 100 minority languages spoken in Russia today. This diversity is a result of Russia's rich history. And no wonder then, that Russia holds many different religions. 71% are part of the Russian Orthodox Church, 15% have no religion, 10% are Muslim, 3% are other Christians and 1% are other. Buddhism is also considered to be one of Russia's traditional religions and is legally a part of Russian historical heritage. Originally a strong religion in southern Siberia, Buddhism now is widespread all over Russia, with many ethnic Russian converts. These facts prove that Russia is more of its own world than just a nation. With such a high diversity in people, languages, cultures, but also nature, it is obvious that there is not one Russia, but many different puzzle pieces that, all together, form modern Russia. This makes clear why Winston Churchill once said that Russia is a riddle wrapped in a mystery inside an enigma. In Russia, people pay with the Russian ruble. One euro is equivalent to 77 Russian rubles, one dollar to 70 rubles. Although the economy of Russia's biggest cities is diverse and present in almost all industry sectors, the overall Russian economy is built on natural resources such as oil, natural gas, precious metals, but also on food products. Russia is the world's largest producer of barley, buckwheat, sugar beds, Roseberries and raspberries, and the world's largest exporter of natural gas, diamonds and palladium, and the world's second largest exporter of petroleum. Russia has a large and sophisticated arms industry, capable of designing and manufacturing high-tech military equipment, including a fifth-generation fighter jet, nuclear-powered submarines, firearms and short-range, long-range ballistic missiles. The value of Russian arms exports increased to 14 billion euros or 15.6 billion US dollars in 2013, second worldwide behind the US. Top military exports from Russia include combat aircrafts, air defense systems, ships and submarines. The economy of Russia is an upper middle income mixed and transition economy. It is the fifth largest national economy in Europe, the 11th largest nominal GDP in the world and the fifth largest by purchasing power parity. However, the wealth inequality also is one of the world's highest. Russia's current geopolitical power, but also future ambitions may be a topic for a whole separate video. But to sum up, Russia's geographical location between Europe and Asia is a big upside, since both exports and imports can take place in a cheap and fast manner. So access to the European, but also to the Asian market is relatively easy. Additionally, Russia is investing a lot of money in Arctic presence, planning to open up a completely new trading route, starting from Southeast Asia, through the Bering Strait, along the Russian Arctic coast, to Europe and vice versa. The so-called Northern Sea Route can, dependent on the source and destination port, shorten travel distance by thousands of kilometers. Russia is neither part of the European Union and obviously not part of NATO, but part of the BRICS states, an association of emerging countries consisting of Brazil, Russia, India, China and South Africa. Furthermore, Russia is one of the founding members of the Eurasian Economic Union. Also, Russia is one of five permanent members of the UN Security Council. Later in this video, there will be an interview with Tim Kirby, who runs a YouTube channel called RTTT, which stands for Russia Tips, Tricks and Travel.
He moved to Russia many years ago and will talk about his journey as well as provide useful tips to people who may consider to move to Russia. If you have a preference which country I should cover next, please let me know down in the comments. This video is part of a video series that covers informative facts and the migration procedure of Switzerland, Germany, the USA, Russia, the United Kingdom, Canada, Australia, New Zealand, France, Spain, Portugal, Italy, Indonesia, India, Israel, Thailand, South Africa, Turkey, Japan, Singapore, the Netherlands, Austria, Sweden, Finland, Norway, Denmark, Belgium, China, Brazil, and Ireland. I've created a dedicated video for every country mentioned. The playlist is linked in the video description as well as in the comments. Maybe I've already added some more countries including your home country, so please make sure to check out the playlist. But let's return to Russia. What are the main advantages of moving to Russia and what needs to be considered? As of the 2015 UN report, Russia ranks fifth worldwide among the countries with the largest foreign-born population, ahead of the United Kingdom and following Saudi Arabia. About 10.1 million people living in Russia were not born in Russia, but moved to this country during their lifetime. The largest foreign-born populations are the Uzbeks, Ukrainians, Tajiks, Azerbaijanis, Armenians, Kyrgyz, Moldovians, Chinese, Kazakhs, Belarusians, Georgians, Vietnamese, Turkmens, Turks, Estonians, Latvians, Lithuanians, Indians, but also Bulgarians, Syrians, US Americans, Germans and Israelis. In terms of percentage of foreign-born population to total population, Russia ranks 102nd with 7.7%, meaning that 7.7% of the total Russian population was born abroad. In this statistic, Russia is heading Malta with 8% and is followed by Portugal with 7.5%. But what are the advantages of moving to Russia? As diverse the country of Russia is, as many different reasons a move to Russia may have. First, family reunification is a possible reason to move to Russia. Russia has the world's third largest diaspora, with 10.6 million Russians living abroad. This is only topped by Mexico with 12.3 million people and India with 15.6 million people living outside their home country. Most of the ethnic Russians that do not live in Russia live in Ukraine, holding 3.8 million Russians. Next comes Kazakhstan with 3.6 million, the USA with 3.1 million, Germany with 1.2 million and Israel with 1 million ethnic Russians. Besides family reunification, better job opportunities are another reason to move to Russia. Especially people from countries that were part of the Soviet Union move to Russia in order to get a better paid job, often sending money that they earned in Russia back to their home country. Since most of them are able to speak Russian, they face no problems in finding a job. But opportunities in job and research are by far not limited to former Soviet states, especially in the mining, oil production and agriculture industry sector, but also in research, Russian companies are actively looking for well-qualified workers. During the last decades, Russia has transitioned from a socialist sealed off and isolated country during the Soviet Union to an emerging capitalist country and one of the world's land of opportunities. One example is the story of the German farmer Stefan Dürr, who moved to Russia and set up a little farm in the year of 2003. Just within 16 years, he was able to develop an agricultural company holding an eye-popping 405,000 acres, generating an annual income of one. 175 million euros or almost 200 million US dollars, one of the largest agriculture companies worldwide. English, Spanish, Chinese and other language teachers also have more than enough opportunities in this country. Moreover, for people who feel thirst of adventure, Russia may be a country for you to consider. Pretty much all lifestyles, from a vibrant city life in humongous metropolises to a relaxed lifestyle in the warm Mediterranean South or a self-sufficient, self-catering lifestyle in your own little countryside house can be lived in Russia. Another big upside is that you can follow all these previously mentioned lifestyles with much less money than in other countries. On average, the Russians earn 8,600 euros per year or 9,600 US dollars a year. This makes Russia rank 45th worldwide. The median income in Russia is at 14,800 euros or 16,500 US dollars. With the median wealth of 3,200 euros or 3,600 US dollars, Russia only ranks 107th worldwide among all countries worldwide in terms of median wealth per person. Therefore, dependent on your country of origin, you probably may afford a life in Russia. If you live of 2,000 euros per month in Madrid, Spain, you need about 1,500 euros to enjoy the same standard of living in Moscow. This means that the cost of living in Moscow is 25% less than the cost of living in Madrid. And of course, other cities and rural areas are much cheaper. St. Petersburg, for instance, that is also referred as the Venice of the North, is again 25% less pricey than Moscow. 
People earn 3 to 5 times the average Russian salary in Moscow, which is the reason why so many Russians, but also people from the former Soviet Union moved here. The Moscow subway serves 9 million people a day. This is more than the subway of New York and London combined. Everybody is running and no one speaks English. That's how foreigners describe Moscow. A two-bedroom apartment in Moscow will cost around 900 euros per month. Of course, there are also some downsides when it comes to moving to Russia. Russians are known for being coconut people. They rarely smile at strangers, do not engage in conversations easily, do not share personal information with strangers and mostly keep to themselves or stay with their close friends and family. However, once you know a Russian better, he or she will probably turn out to be a very good friend. Another downside is that it's quite hard to build up a social life or even to get a job without speaking Russian. Especially in smaller cities, English won't be understood, so learning Russian definitely should be part of your checklist of moving to Russia. As of the International PISA Education Comparison of 2015, Russia ranks 27th of 71 participating countries. This score is still better than most other European countries and also the USA, but it won't hurt to schedule some extra school lessons for your child in case you are planning to move to Russia with your children. Let's continue with interviewing Tim. Tim, when did you move to Russia and which city did you move to? I moved to Moscow, Russia in 2006. However, I also lived in Kazakhstan from 2004 to 2006 as a US Peace Corps volunteer starting in Almaty where we did training and then in a tiny village near the city of Uralsk in the very westernmost part of Kazakhstan. Why Russia and not another country in Europe? If we remember back to the partitioning of Poland, uh, one third went to Russia, one third went to the Austro-Hungarians, and one third went to Prussia, right? Well, that third that was part of the Russian Empire with what we today refer to as Ukraine and the uh, greater Russia, Belaru Belarus, uh, that all uh, is where my ancestors came from. So uh, there's a little few options in terms of going back to the motherland, to be honest. And when I was younger, I was more considering going to Poland, but uh, it kind of worked out that uh, Peace Corps in Poland closed up shop and it seemed like it was sort of destiny to go to a Russian speaking country. So it just kind of worked out that way. Uh, it's very possible that if I would have applied to Peace Corps a few years earlier or something else would have happened, I would have learned Polish and I'd probably be in Poland right now and have a very different uh, political views. So it was a little bit due to destiny that it was Russia, but in general I really wanted to go back to Eastern Europe, uh, where all my ancestors came from. So it was going to be somewhere in Eastern Europe, not say France or Germany, because I have no connection to those countries. Uh, the thing is, if I wanted to live in a country where I sort of have not a whole heck of a lot of connection to things, uh, but there's uh, maybe more money, uh, then I could have just stayed in America. What do you enjoy the most about Russia? Uh, the thing that I enjoy the most about Russia, probably on a daily basis, is the fact that people generally here don't care about a lot of things. And that lack of caring creates this sort of, uh, I don't know, freedom? I call it a sort of accidental or maybe incidental libertarianism. Uh, because when no one cares, you have a lot of freedom, and that's very nice. But on the other hand, there's still more of a society. People are a little bit more cultured. Uh, there's a feeling you're part of a greater whole. Whereas in America, I think we've become very, very atomized. Uh, so yeah, that on that sort of things. Uh, generally the things I like about Russia tend to be more philosophical and therefore they sound weird when you try to explain them, but uh, that's the way it is. What do you miss the most about the US? Uh, in the United States, everything related to driving is better. Some Russian listening to this will probably say, oh, you're talking about the road conditions. No, the roads in Russia have gotten awesome. Uh, the roads in Russia have gotten better and better, so it's not the roads, but the attitudes towards driving, uh, the extra space, uh, parking, uh, I don't know, just everything about driving uh, is just better in the United States. Uh, it's easier to get your license, it's easier to drive anywhere, easier to deal with people on the road. Um, the designs of the cars seem more logical. Russia's stuck using French car designs in a country that resembles France at about 0%. Uh, so yeah, that that's number one. Uh, things related to guns, uh, the gun laws here aren't too bad, uh, but uh, definitely in America, things, uh, well in Ohio I should say, because the, state, um, the states regulate guns, but uh, in Ohio things are easier with guns, and I'm a big uh, gun fan. Uh, I miss American football, American football is the best sport in the world. Uh, I'll put it this way, be it American football or guns or, or driving, um, hobbies are a little bit easier to do in America too, regardless of what your hobby is. Uh, but just in general, um, these things aren't really enough to build your life around. They're not really enough to make you feel like, wow, my life is great. I'm so happy that it's easy to drive to the Home Depot, uh, more so than taking a, you know, a taxi to, uh, Leroy Merlin or whatever, you know? Was it hard for you to learn Russian? 
Uh, learning any foreign language is hard, that's why most people give up. So while Russian was no exception, you just kind of have to stick with it. And uh, immigrating to another country forces you to stick with it. What tips would you give people who want to move to Russia? Well, the first thing is you have to understand is that Russia doesn't want you here. The uh, migration services and the laws are oriented to keep Russia very isolated from the rest of the world, which I actually agree with. I am a fan of borders. I don't want to live in a borderless world. I like borders. They're awesome. Uh, and so you have to understand that no one is going to hold your hand. No one wants you here. The immigration process is the mo absolutely most brutal thing I've ever gone through in my life, especially from a bureaucratic standpoint. Uh, it is a nightmare. And if you want to live here, you have to fight to live here. And you also have to be married to a citizen because otherwise you're not getting in. If you could decide again, would you still move to Russia? Oh, the problem is if you ask someone to do something again, well, there were a few uh, things, uh, moments of extreme luck that have given me the career I have today, which I rather enjoy. Um, and the thing is, I don't know if I could recreate those moments of extreme luck. You know what I mean? They were kind of uh, mm, that lightning in a jar, as they say. You, you can't just sort of create that. So I don't know if I did this whole thing again, if things would have worked out. Uh, maybe they would have. Maybe they'd have gone better because I wouldn't have made the same mistakes as I've made in my career and my life. Um, I would say I probably would because... Uh, life in America for me seemed kind of pointless, and I don't see how I could make it have a point. Uh, if, if you see what I mean, uh, I don't see how if I went back in time, somehow I could magically, uh, make things better when I felt completely helpless to make them better in the first place. Uh, whereas in Russia, you have this very, um, peaceful lifestyle where you everyone looks the same you look like one of them everyone gets along more or less um things are simpler they make more sense if you're a man you can be as macho as you want no political correctness so on the russian side i would say russia offers a lot more things that are of philosophical value and this is very important to understand because generally a lot of people in russia who want to leave usually base this not on something uh, ideological but on something purely material which in some ways is offensive as an american because russians want to go to america only for the stuff they don't give a shit about thomas jefferson or george washington or uh, the constitution or any of that that means nothing they want the stuff uh, and so america is much like a woman with big breasts at a bar everyone wants to talk to her because she has big breasts you know uh, whereas russia i think is a more um, spiritual ideological journey if you come here uh, that's the way i would sort of phrase it thanks tim for taking time to join this interview make sure to check out his channel that is linked in the video description for more informative videos about Tim's life in Russia. What needs to be done in order to move to Russia? As always, it's best to first travel into the country in order to get to know it better, before starting the migration process. People from most of the countries that were part of the Soviet Union, as well as people from all countries from the South American continent, South Africa, Botswana, Hong Kong, Macau, Thailand, the United Arab Emirates, Israel, Serbia, Bosnia and Herzegovina, South Korea and Laos are able to travel Russia without having to apply for a visa. The standard procedure to get a citizenship consists of the following steps. Obtaining a temporary residence permit, obtaining a permanent residence permit and obtaining the Russian citizenship. Under current law, the citizenship of Russia can be retrieved after five years of residence and after passing an exam in Russian language. As of Wikipedia, Russia maintains one of the world's most liberal immigration policies. Anyone who works in Russia for five years and develops fluency in Russian language can become a citizen, as long as he or she has not committed a crime. Almost anyone who is hired by a Russian firm can stay in this country and work indefinitely. This reflects a policy change of the Russian government from the more restrictive policy enacted after the dissolution of the Soviet Union in response to declining birth rates. Russian language native speakers, those married to Russian citizens, highly qualified specialists, businessmen and refugees are eligible for a simplified immigration procedure. It allows to get citizenship in three years or even to skip temporary or permanent residency. So once you developed fluent Russian language skills, getting the Russian citizenship will be a quick win. However, as Tim already mentioned, in reality there is a ton of paperwork to do and it may take ages due to high bureaucracy. I hope that I could provide useful information about the Russian country and the process of migrating to it. Please let me know which country I should cover next. And don't forget to check out the playlist where you will find more videos targeting other countries around the globe. Thanks for watching.